Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Today we are going to be working on a miniature hammer. Thanks for watching. Okay everyone, here we are at the workbench. So, more importantly, my clipboard. This is the job that we are working on uh, for this customer. She was wanting a anniversary gift for her husband and I'm going to be forging a much larger one of these at a later date and I plan on doing a video of it. It is a wrought iron hammer with steel faces welded in and then you know obviously it's going to be hardened and tempered and be a usable hammer. But I'm not going to be able to get this done in time for her. So instead of telling her that I couldn't do the job altogether, I came up with that I would make her a small miniature, kind of like a coming soon, to be able to help her out on her anniversary. So she has some sort of gift to give her husband and it not, you know, not be left empty handed. So this is what we are going to be making today. Not technically this hammer. I don't know where she got this picture online. I'm going to do my own style, but essentially this style hammer. This happens to be a Thor type style hammer, or as we know it in the blacksmithing trade, a rounding hammer. So these are very popular, by the way, if anybody has any ideals on selling stuff like this. These are just very popular handles, hammers, and she wants this rune kind of forged into the side of it and says that it means love, strong, and marriage. So, um, yeah. I'm not really into any of the Greek mythology or Norse or anything like that, but I forge for a living. So I do what my clients will ask of me or towards their specs, and I leave that on them. So anyways, this is what we're going to be making today, uh, and we will get started here. I'll come back over here to the workbench after I move this out of the way, and I'll show you our stock sizes that we're going to go with. Okay, everyone, here we are at the workbench again. So, here is my material that I'm going to be working with. This happens to be half inch wide by three quarter of an inch tall bar stock. That's going to become our hammer head. And then this is just three eighths round rod. This is going to get forged down and become our hammer handle. Nothing really to it. We're just going to be making a little miniature hammer. So the first step in this process is going to be actually, you can do whatever side you want first, but usually like with any hammer, you start with the head first. So we'll set the hammer to the side and we'll work on the head of part of it. This I'm going to, since it's a quick turnaround job and I need to get it out the door, I'm going to be doing this fairly simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come down here. This is just a little cruddy end. I'll cut that off. And then I'll measure to where I've got equal distances, enough for the hammer head, on the half inch side. Not the three quarter side, but the half inch side. And I'm going to drill myself a pilot hole. This is just mild steel rod. We're not doing any high carbon steel as this is just a kind of a gimmicky thing. So, But I'm going to drill a hole through there so this way I can actually drift and enlarge that hole and give it that pucker out and then kind of work it from there. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this. I just want to be able to take and knock a hole through it quickly and be able to take and continue on with my forging and just do like a real quick hammer deal. This is about the easiest way you can do it. If you want to take the time, you can punch this easy enough. Just remember when punching, it does have a tendency to drag the top surface material down in the hole and that may leave you with an ugly waste that you may not want in the piece or you have to spend a lot of time working that out. So drilling a hole on something this size is more than appropriate and then we'll just have to take and drift it out to the correct size for the handle. After we get that done we'll move on to the handle and by the way before I move on we're going to be leaving this on a long bar that way we can heat this section up with a torch and we can just drift it there. I don't have to kick on the big forge I don't need a bunch of heat I just need a localized heat where I'm drifting. Same thing with this rod here. We'll probably just heat it with the torch. I'll cut it off at about, 
Oh, I don't know. Well, I'll wait until after I get it forged. It really won't matter as long as it's on the end of the rod. We're just going to heat this up, give it some shape, make it look like a hammer, kind of like a rustic hammer handle, and then knock a hole in it and rivet it into the head of the hammer head. So, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, now that we got that hole drilled, the only important part of that is to make sure that it's centered in the bar, as this will affect how the bar swells out when you drift it open. Here I'm just using a very small punch to take and drift and enlarge the size of the holes a little bit. This is less about the tenon in that type of effect and just more about the look to give us that bit of a pucker. Now here, I'm going to show you guys and gals a little different technique for straightening a hole that's been drifted using your Pritchell hole, and if it's larger work, you can do it on the hardy. The next step in this process, we're going to take and make sure and get this laid out just right in order for our tenon. How are we doing our tenon, you may ask? Well. We're going to go over that in the next slide here. But first, we need to take and lay out how much material we need for the tenon to go all the way through the bar stock. And I determined it by here, and I like to have about a cube of length above for riveting. And here we are. This is how we're going to create our tenon. You could forge this in, but since I have a belt sander, and this needed to be a quick turnaround job. It is just as easy to turn down this tenon on the belt sander itself. As you can see, the belt sander hogs off quite a bit of material and makes pretty quick work of it. Now, if you adjust your belt sander itself to where it rides a little more towards one edge or the other, the tracking, you can get some pretty clean results with this. Here's the finished tenon, and as you can see, it fits through with a little over a cube of material still sticking out, like so. You want to make sure that the bottom of your tenon joint is very nice and flush against the hammerhead itself. And then here, I'm just showing you I'm going to measure off what looks about right for the handle and eyeballing again what looks about right for the head. Once you have that figured out, leaving everything on the bars, we're just going to lock it in the vise and just peen this over cold. Now you can do this hot if you wish. I do a lot of stuff cold. I don't find the need in using the torch when I can get it done cold just as well. The only time that I do stuff hot is if I'm working with a material that has a tendency to split or crack or chip. Certain mild steels chip and others don't. Here you can see the camera focusing in and out a little bit and I'm sorry about that. I forgot to turn on one of the features that gives it steady recording. But essentially with this you're just going to drive and planish that head down tight onto the hammerhead itself. All I'm doing here is just finishing that up. Now in this clip I've already cut off with an angle grinder the head from the parent bar stock and now I'm just giving the handle some rough in shape. I chose to do this instead of hammering because of the head joint the way it went together I felt that it might weaken it or loosen up a little bit if I were to do a lot of heating and hammering on the handle portion itself. Also what you see me doing here in this video is I gr I'm grinding flats on this and then those are going to be turned into 
the oval shape of a standard hammer handle. As you can tell, this is pretty rough grinding. I'm just trying to take and get it to look like it's been roughed up and battle worn. Okay, everyone, here we are. We've got some work completed. So the thing I want to take and show you here is what I was essentially doing at the sander, like I was explaining, is I'm just giving this essentially what would look like a forge texture in a way, like as if I had forged this, since we already take and put it through here. There again, this is just aesthetic. I want it to look like something, you know, that's a little battle-worn or whatever. But, as you can see, I still left it on the bar. The next step in this process that we are going to do is we are actually going to cold hammer on these faces to take and swell the faces and make, enlarge them bigger than what the body of the actual little miniature hammer is. After we get that done, we will lock it in the vise, still on here in the drill press, and we will drill a very tiny hole in it so this way it can be made into a keychain. So that'll be the next steps in the process. So I will go back into another little voiceover here as I peen this over. That way it doesn't get too loud. Okay, everybody. Here we are. Doing this, you want to take and have a lightweight hammer. We're not trying to take and drive the whole piece. We are just trying to take and peen the faces themselves. You don't have to work very hard or very fast at this. We are just trying to take and create some facets. Keep in mind when you're rotating this hammer around on the anvil and you're peening this up, that whatever you're doing on the top side is being reflected on the under side or the opposite side of the hammer face itself. So it may not be entirely necessary to do it on both sides of the hammer head they may create enough swell, but you have to take and make sure that the other hammer face is coming along as well as the hammer face that you're hammering on currently. It takes a little bit of technique to learn how to hammer on this just with the right amount of force to get the swell that you want, but with a little bit of practice you'll get it just fine. The biggest trick is with this being cold, it likes to skate around the anvil quite a bit, as you can see. That is about the only difficult part of doing this. Okay, everyone. So here, I went ahead and I did this off camera. But after I forged out my little handle area, I went ahead and decided I better make a little wider spot here that I can drill into. That way that there's enough meat around the hammer handle itself. So... I'm going to come up here, I'm going to find me a nice center point, put a center punch mark, and just give it a little mark like that. So that's going to become the bottom end of our hammer handle itself. Hopefully you guys can see that well enough. Yeah, so we're going to drill that out now, and then essentially we're just going to cut this off and then grind it the vise. And I'll be back with you guys uh, for the finishing steps. Okay, everyone, here we are at the table. As you can see, we're getting close. All I've done here is I've pretty much wire wheeled this thing for a finish. Um, I'm going to do a little bit different with this. I'm actually going to heat blue the head of the hammer and then down here I'm actually going to brass brush the hammer handle itself just to give it a little extra kick um, and try to get it real dark. So what I'll do is I'll take the whole thing to a heat blue and then I'll brass brush this part to just give it a little bit of contrast um, and I think this will make a nice little hammer. Um, I went to this belt sander briefly just to take out some of the sand marks, not a bunch, just a little bit of that. You can leave those in if you want. Um, as far as this piece goes, it has enough forging character in it as it is that I didn't really feel I needed to leave the hammer marks into the faces. So, the next step in all this is I'm going to put in, essentially, the lady's date, 
her special wedding date on one side. And then on the other side, I'm going to cut in her little rune glyph thing or whatever it is she's wanting there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just chisel that in. And I won't bore you with all that long process. Um, but, you know, this hammer's pretty much done. So you can do this with any style hammer. You can make cross bean hammers. You can make Swedish hammers. You can make your favorite forging hammer. Uh, anything in miniatures this way. Uh, it's kind of a fun little project that you can do. And, you know, it doesn't take too long. So it takes longer to demonstrate this than, and film it than it does to actually make one of these. Also, these are great little sellers. Um, you know, there's multiple people who sell these on eBay, I mean on Etsy, and, you know, all across the globe and online and at craft shows and flea markets and Ren fairs and you name it. So they are another great little item that you can add to your shop that doesn't take a lot of time. So anyways, that's it for today. I will try to come back and do a, uh, let's see here, I'll try to put a photo is what I'm trying to say. Sorry about that. I will try to put a photo here at the end of this video um, of the actual finished hammer after I've got all the stuff in it. So thank you all for watching. God bless you all. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I love to hear your feedback. We'll talk to y'all later.